Seattle Seahawks. Um, nine wins is their over-under for the season on uh, Vegas odds right now. They needed offensive line, defensive line, and edge rusher help. So basically, trenches. And with their first pick, they went with Jordan Brooks at pick number 27 out of Texas Tech. And it surprised basically everybody, <laughs> even though we, we shouldn't have been surprised. Because Pete they Carroll do this every year. Getting, Pete Carroll is getting Bill Belichick ish. He doesn't trade out of the first, but has that guy ever drafted somebody in the first round where everybody was like, "Yeah, that's the uh, who is that guy?" Yeah, who I mean, did we take what? Huh? It's it's very strange. Uh, according to now, Pro he Football Focus, always hits on these dudes. Yeah, Pro Football Focus said uh, he was their sixty fourth ranked prospect. Um, you know. From the from a run defense perspective, ninety one point five run defense grade in twenty nineteen. Uh, he's one of the best linebackers in the class as far as that is uh, concerned. He's not someone who's going to play all that well in space or make plays in coverage. And I mean, you're having to deal with uh, with with uh, uh, Kittle and and guys like I mean, it, not good in coverage. The have you watched the NFL the last two to three years? Yeah, if you got, you got a, a linebacker that can't cover somebody, you can't play anymore, man. No, and I, I guess I I can understand it. Like if he's great in run coverage, well, yeah, you're playing the 49ers twice, but they've also got Kittle. So y- if you take well, away the and run Debo and and yeah, you got all kind of stuff. That another receiver that Kyle Shanahan seems to think is amazing. So yeah. But, <laughs> I don't think you're, and then you also have to compete with the Rams and Sean McVay, who was the golden goose a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, I, yes, if I'm in this division, I want to draft defensive guys because I have to deal with those two cats. Okay. Yeah. Be clear. I like drafting defensive guys. I, once again, this is almost the same conversation with Pete as I had with Kyle on defense. And I have this with Bill all the time. I don't know who the hell our first pick is ever going to be, but I know this. I just trust that the guy might do well because he knows more than because I of the do. system. Like, he yeah. knows more than I do, but you just named things that are flaws that I would think would take you out of being able to play at the NFL level as a linebacker, much less be taken in the first round. Yeah. Uh, now day two, they moved <laughs> up to take Tennessee's Daryl Taylor. Uh, an edge rusher out of Tennessee, uh, yeah. you know, okay. Like, it, I, th- I think it was a little bit of a reach, but again, it might fit into their scheme. It might fit what they're wanting to do. He uh, he turned it on down the stretch of the 2019 season, earned an SEC high 89.6 rushing grade from week seven through the end of the year. Uh, going forward to the NFL, Taylor projects as someone who will be a solid starter, but even though we're higher on him than most, this is pro football focus. Uh, this was still a little early for him to come off the board, especially given the trade up to get him. I, he still would have been there. Like yeah. I, I just, I don't, I can't, I, I don't. I, like I said, I, Pete confuses me. But he, I look at, I've kind of seen the Seahawks drafts a lot like the Patriots drafts. If you want to be like an organization, listen, just because he's bad at drafting doesn't mean you have to be bad at drafting. Okay, yeah, no, that's be true. like him and all the other things. Try to draft better and you can beat them <laughs> because this is this is exactly like the, this is exactly like a Patriots draft, except he wasn't smart enough to trade out of the first. McKinnon said, uh, I mean, hasn't the Seahawks MO been all about having linebackers stop the run and make the defensive backs cover everyone? Yeah, yeah but, but I think the game is changing, dude. I it's don't know completely that you can different that that has been the MO. Tight ends are way too athletic, and slot guys are getting matched up on linebackers now because of defensive schemes and offensive schemes. I'm yeah. just telling you, that scares the shit out of me if you can't cover anymore because you're just asking for some little guy or some crazy athletic tight end to just eat you alive in the middle of the field. Oh, 100%. The middle That's... of the field is the only place in the NFL that is still wide open all day already against good linebackers. If you put somebody who can't cover in the middle of the field – it's two offensive geniuses are going to just chew it up relentlessly. Yeah, 100%. Um, let's go ahead and run through the rest of their draft. Round three, they got interior offensive lineman Damian Lewis out of LSU. Round four, they got tight end Colby Parkinson out of Stanford, who I think could actually end up being pretty good. 
Uh, probably going to the, be the replacement. You're getting to the best player that they drafted, in my opinion. Uh, round four, they got DJ Dallas out of Miami. That's my and, guy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think he's going to be just fine. I think they he, have they have problems with running back staying healthy. If if they could get a hot young guy, this is what they do every year. They draft a running back at some point in time. Yeah, and and the next year that kid is you know a top ten running back in the NFL. Yeah, I mean they they just keep them rotating in and out, and right. you always got fresh legs. Uh, round five, they got edge rusher Alton Robinson out of Syracuse. They got uh, wide receiver Freddie Swain from Florida in round six. And then round seven, they took tight end out of LSU. Not who you would think. This is the frustrating pick of my life. Steven Sullivan, who... When I saw a tight end at LSU, I got ecstatic. Yeah, and, and then you see it's not who you were thinking. It not wasn't... My boy, not my boy Thaddeus. It wasn't Moss. Um, it was Steven Sullivan, who, you know, did play fairly well. But he's he fine. I don't know yet. Listen, for what Brian Shanahan likes to run, uh, Sullivan's probably going to be really good because yeah, he's the better blocking tight end. Yeah, I, I and he, and he's fine and he's fine. He's not garbage, but there's a reason he went in the seventh round late. I yeah, mean, uh, sixth round wide receiver Freddie Swain out of Florida. Um, only had like twenty some odd catches last year. Uh, he caught the the hail mary two years ago against Tennessee. He uh, is a big body that can go up and get it. I mean, yeah. he is. Big, and he can fly. Way, like he's, he's super fast. Way bigger than Thaddeus. Way bigger than Thaddeus. What's he? What, how, how tall is this guy? He's like 6'4", I think, if I'm not mistaken. Thaddeus is like 6'2". Uh, the LSU program has him at 6'2". So, that, yeah. know, like 6 foot. He, he, he might be like 6'1". Uh, Freddie Swain, however, let's see. He is, uh, let's see, NFL.com is pulling up the uh, the drafting combine profile right now. Um yeah, I mean that. You know, we'll we'll see. I think he's a bigger guy. Uh, no, Freddie Swain's at six foot, one hundred ninety seven pounds. No, per, no, per the uh, per the combine. I don't care about Freddie. Oh, you're talking about uh, Stephen Sullivan. Um, As opposed to Thaddeus. Uh, Stephen Sullivan. Uh, he's six five. Yeah, he's he's a bigger guy. Yep. he's much bigger than Thaddeus. Six five, two forty eight. So blocking tight end, you know, way bigger. Um, and and actually, I mean, he caught a he caught a touchdown pass against Alabama. He, you know, all kind of stuff. But no, 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 he he was not bad. But you're right; he only had twenty receptions, some twenty something receptions throughout the year. You know, he's just not not who I was thinking when I saw tight end from LSU got drafted late. In not this draft. not who you would think would uh, would take a flyer on a draft pick. Uh, yeah. But overall, I, what we didn't do with the Forty ers is whether or not we liked the uh, the Forty ers draft. It, I think you can't help but like the Forty ers draft. Um, I do I do like the 49ers draft. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. only had five picks. They took flyers basically round five through seven. Uh, and the first two picks, I think, were good. So I like uh, both. Their, well, I liked one of their picks. I don't like the other, but they got a guy making the decision that knows a hell of a lot more about offense than I do. Yeah, as far as the Seahawks go, since we are on the Seahawks right now. Uh, I don't I, know that I like any of these. I, 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 like, D, I like DJ. Yeah, I like DJ I, a lot. I I like. Yeah. How about this? I don't like the draft, in as much as it, I nobody really knows much about these guys and whether or not they will be useful going forward because they weren't. Like, if we look back three years from now and none of these guys are any good in the NFL, are you going to be surprised? No, uh, but I will say this: I do trust the Seahawks organization to be able to make these guys into useful NFL players. I agree with that. I, no, so, not not disagreeing with so that. So I, I don't. It's not. I don't like the draft, but I don't know that I ever liked the Seahawks drafts. So, I just I just felt like your first couple of picks, you you had a chance to take far superior talent than you took. Yeah, I I agree. Just my opinion, though. I agree. Um, with that like said, DGL. let's uh, like Seattle running backs a lot. Yeah, you always do. You always do. <laughs> Let's uh let's go ahead and move into the next round.